Welcome back, everybody. We're moving on to match number two. EMEA SSG versus X Oblivione. I feel like this is also going to be a close one as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're going to get Matt I think five there's a more clear underdog long, to me. But, uh... <laughs> For me, SSG is the more clear favorite than we had in the last match. Okay. I, I just feel like, you know, there's so much veterancy and name value in this team. Even though Twisted Minds, a lot of those players haven't played in the Overwatch League, they do have veteran like Kellex. You know, they've got players coming off a World Cup championship. Whereas these guys, all vets, you know, like a lot of the London roster from last year, adding in Psycho for flexibility, Funny Astro, one of the best Lucios in the world, if not the best. And so this team looks like tooled up, very, very ready to go. They did take a beating from Ents, but no one else has really done that to them. And, you know, Ents is potentially in a category a of their own. Yeah, so a favorite right now if they're beating Twisted Minds, right? So Yeah, so for EXO, I mean, they've got their work cut out for them. There is going to be some very aggressive plays. And I think Ents, they've had, a, or sorry, SSG, they've had a, a second to, to think. They've had a day to kind of update their strategies. Um, and we'll see what they end up going with here. We've seen a ton of Winston from them, but I sort of wonder if that's going to last against these top tier teams. I think even EXO also play Winston. I mean, who knows? Like, you get a monkey mirror here. We, <laughs> yeah, anything's yeah. possible. We, we could. Nice. <laughs> um, because that is what Exoblivione has kind of delivered to us so far. And we mm. saw when Exoblivione, when they played the Twisted Minds, Chase, their young tank player, he was sitting on Winston a lot, trying to play Winston into these MAGA compositions, trying to find picks around. And that can sometimes work when you have really good Sojourn players, you can find these wide angles. But for the most part, it just hasn't been a great tank matchup. Now, going up against Peps here, playing Orisa against Winston, that's that's my favorite, like, you know, pleasure after the broadcast. I just go home and play Orisa into Winston. Uh, that, that's great fun. <laughs> but it is going to be an interesting tank matchup, I feel like here, because as you say, Jake, while Space Station Gaming, you'd think, okay, Space Station Gaming, Brawl, Hardy on Mauga, which we have seen a little bit. They have flexed a lot over to the Winston, subbing in Psycho to play the Echo. Instead of Backbone sitting on that Symmetra instead, we are going to see Lee Junk for our first map, so and we did see Backbone in the starting lineup. So I think we'll see some Mauga compositions come out here, seeing Backbone on the Symmetra. He's one of the best May and Symmetra players in the world, right? But it's more about Exoblivione. Are we going to see the Orisa? Are we going to see Winston composition? I don't think they're going to match the Mauga, and so it's going to be an uphill battle in my mind. Yeah, Li Zhang, such a good map for Malga. I can't help but feel that this is going to be kind of a comfort spot for SSG. It's no surprise they start the series off here on Li Zhang Tower. All right, it is definitely going to be an exciting match. I think the match is ready to start. Let's jump right in. Casters, take it away. Thank you so much, Danny and the desk. Yeah, that was an exciting match, but this next one has uh, a bit more on the line because this is the lower bracket semifinal between EXO and Space Station, and loser is out. Loser is out. They have uh, sadly got to wait until stage two of the OWCS to try to make a comeback. But, you know, they're not going home without some money and also some circuit points as well. So, so there's a little bit there, but you don't want just the consolation prize. You want the victory. And while the desk said, and the also viewer predictions as well, put Space Station Gaming ahead of the pack, I'm not sure that it's going to be as much of a clear favorite as what people are saying that it might be. I agree with that. I think Cookie um, looks like he's at a disadvantage against a name as as well known and as good as Sparkers when it comes to the Sojourn world. But Cookie has really impressed me. I've seen this guy around and he delivers a fantastic performance on the Sojourn. Um, and then yeah. the, uh, the Flex DPS looking at Space Station, they're currently running with Backbone. Psycho's Echo has been a boon to them against Mauga or Orisa Comps. We'll see if it's like a Symmetra Teleporter Ooh. strat with Hottie. That's usually what they've gone for and how X are going to bunker down against that. Yeah, I mean, I, the desk was talking, though. Are they going to match a hottie on the Malga? The answer is no, as of right now. Chase is hovering over the Orisa, and it actually looks like Ex Oblivione are going to be taking a page out of Ence's book right now. They've got Cookie on the Sojourn, Shockwave now on the Echo, and Chase on the Orisa. This is the perfect counter composition that we saw from Ence, but can Ex Oblivione capitalize and play to the same level of effect that we saw from Ence earlier today? with these low ceilings like Shockwave. 
is going to have to just play some ground echo, <laughs> as you called it earlier. <laughs> and that's just fine. It doesn't always have to be flying. But Space Station have a Symmetra Teleporter that they could surprise that ground echo and everyone who's on the ground with. So I wonder how SSG are going to make that call. Backbone makes his way into the back, but needs to not go in alone. Landon has his attention, but his attention was split, and so was his head. And Exo dealing with that main healer means they're easily coming out ahead in this fight. Take a look at that, right? Like, it's going to come down to those first picks. And as you're giving some credit to Cookie, I want to give a little bit more that Cookie was the soldier and that we saw go toe to toe with Quartz. Yeah. Uh, Quartz is no slouch when it comes to that soldier. We just saw that battle between Quartz and Kai. And Quartz, at the end of the day, was still holding his own against Kai's soldier. So, Cookie up there with the best of the best and going to hopefully continue to do that for Ex Oblivione today. For now, it's a solid lead for Ex Oblivione coming down to some ults. And Landon, 10% ahead of the Katsune Rush, gonna pull the trigger, and Sparker didn't get enough healing. The random stray poke caught him, and that's where Landon is his hands full, trying to help everybody stay up. FSG had that advantage in losing Sparker. You could tell the impact he's had, because without him, SSG are losing hold of the point that they were so close to capping, and Exo get to progress forward and maybe even hold the choke if they want. They can. They've got the Terra Surge. They also have a full way. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> Sparker uh, shut down that flank from Shockwave, but is still could have been a close hold if Shockwave were alive. So, Exoblivione, they've got a backup out of this one. Crispy's going to be able to help them get the disengage. Uh, but you can also see where Shockwave is playing from. Still able to come back into this. And, oh, Sparker. Wow. Cookie versus Sparker. Sparker having the edge. And wow, getting crispy too. And this is where Axo need, need to take a page out of Ensis' book, as you said, and have Chase maybe be more aggressive. If that Sojourn is becoming a problem, you can use that Javelin spin to get close, get some, and throw the Javelin at them too. But for now, Axo at 84% is a good start. Yeah, I'd be a little nervous if I were Shockwave or Cookie playing over on that ledge. Because if you get speared, you might just be going off of the map. So gotta be a little bit cautious of where that Arissa is going to be. But a server root push here for Space Station as the cage fight comes out. Uh, wow, sound barrier <laughs> into a cage fight. Exo are living. Hottie, I don't think wants to with that kind of charge, but the sound barrier, Bunny Astro is along with a plan down to clown and Space Station get close to matching the score. Still last fight though for Ex Oblivione. So if they're able to come back in with the win in this next, then they are able to get this first round. But I'm looking at Shockwave's duplicate. There's a Malka on the other side that Hottie's playing and we've seen how that can go sometimes. Oh, Exo. Still trying to protect, still trying to retake the point. They were close to that Photon Bear from Backbone, Exo. Smart to disengage as Jake explained on the desk. You need the right tools to fight through a photon barrier fight. And Exo go forward with the Katsune Rush as soon as that expires. And the dupe from Shockwave is just an insurmountable frontline that Exo have. But Space Station, they're smart at disen disengaging. And they managed to take some trades in the process. This is the final fight that Exo need to win for round one. This Terra Surge is huge. Realizing the Suzu from Landon wasn't ready. And that's how Exo come out on top to take round number one on Control Center. Super clean round as well. Outside of the frags that we saw from Sparker and Backbone, Ex Oblivione, they've got a good schoolroom lesson a little bit earlier, getting a chance to watch Ents and how they approached that Mauga matchup. It's almost just page for page the same that we have across the board. But, hot, like, you know, Hottie, Space Station, they do play very together, very aggressive with the synergy that they have built up over their time in the Overwatch League on London Spitfire. That, so they're still able to play as a cohesive unit and maybe even a little bit better than what we have seen from Twisted Mind so far. But Ex Oblivione, they have got Shockwave's Echo. That's so scary. And how does Space Station really contend with that? Hadi has to play way safer, knowing that that Focus Beam is a big problem. And how vulnerable Maga is to poke. 
And that's exactly why Hottie and friends are playing in Dojo, just relying on Sparker to kind of charge up some rails and get first picks. And Backbone can dictate if they want to brawl or not with the Symmetra Teleporter. Exo, especially have Shockwave above and around this point, can throw in random sticky grenades. I mean, Yubi found that out the hard way last series, and that's the impact an Echo can have to deal with Magas and deal with any squishy characters that are on their lonesome. You see Shockwave's eyes are set on Backbone, but there's great peel coming out of Funny Astro, and that's why he's known as one of the best Lucios. His awareness and how he uses his speed, how he marks enemies, is how Funny Astro can protect people like Backbone and Sparker. For now, though, Exo's frontline is just different. Chase makes his way forward, and Exo are taking space. SSG are gonna fight for it. Back with the sound barrier, and charging on in is Hottie. Landon having the consumer any rush in their back pocket is nice and that's gonna be what's used next fight uh, they might feel a little bit needy to use it here just knowing that ex oblivion are still here to make that fight Exo at least have their own Katsune rush, so they're going to re-engage with this. Go toe to toe and wow, Backbone got headshot! And Exo are just finishing off all these low HP targets. The focus fire is really great coming out of Exo, but they gave up a 52% to Space Station, so they got some work ahead of them. A little bit, but it's not insurmountable. And Exobolivione also have the breathing room of having won that very first round. Uh, so feeling pretty good about this, but uh, Backbone's got the photon barrier, as you called out. You also have Sparker that's working up to the overclock, but quick teleporter engage, wasting no time. Yeah, this is G. We're gonna protect the point now with the photon barrier, and Exo are smart to, they know when to leave, and what tools they have, and how they want to engage with them. Now SSG have flipped the point because of that early photon barrier and you don't need to necessarily brawl. It's how you take space with the photon barrier that is what you really need to focus on. Sound barrier for Buddy Astro. It's not online in time for the Terra Surge, but the Suzu from Landon will assist SSG to keep thriving through. Now they're dancing around their half of the point. Exo gonna use the overclock and SSG are probably fine with this because they have the sound beer and the extra health to dance with. Hadi with the cage fight. Exo can just zone away from it, but Sparker rounds the corner, finds a few picks and SSG fight their way through 10% away from round three. One more fight, and this is going to be a good one for Space Station to take. I expect that market is going to go in a very similar way, and Exobolvione, they're not really able to come back into this one as a full team of five for this fight. That Doomfist, oh boy. Not a lot of CC on SSG's side to make him worry too much to lock him down and it's just come down to the poke that SSG have on the back of Sparker and Shockwave tries to do his best impression but no final blows come through Exo don't have the space Shockwave has the touch it's overtime for SSG and it's just all going their way Exo don't really have the tools to break them apart so we go to our deciding round on Lijong Tower Exoblivione, they're going to have a bit of a tough time playing against Space Station when they do have this, uh, like, uh, they do have the fight around the point. Where does the Echo come in from? There's only so many angles that that Echo can access the team. And you also have the Sojourn with a similar problem. Space Station with the teleporter usage. We have seen just how sneaky they can really be utilizing a strategy with that alongside the Reinhardt in their Overwatch League days. Uh, and Backbone is so clean with it. Whether it's the tracking from the beam or even just knowing the spots to actually use that teleporter, it feels really great to, to watch that. Exo's macro understanding was really good that round. Like you said, dodging the teleporters as much as they can. But do SSG just want to go straight to the point? Do they want to engage into Exo? The Doomfist is going to stick from Chase, which is at least the first for me to see and how comfortable he is. This is such a huge distance between the two, so <laughs> Chase doesn't want to feed his brains out trying to get close. And there's this is such an interesting point, too. Not going to be fighting on the point just yet, but yeah, Chase, uh, how does he actually engage this? I'm very interested to see who his target's going to be. And this is a great point for the Doomfist. Um, lots of close walls. And if you do play on the point, you could try to punch people off the map. But for now, SSG have capped first. 
They're giving up so much percentage here if you're EXO. You're just waiting for this setup to happen, and it's not really coming through. Yeah, EXO... Oh, managed to get behind, force out the Suzu from Landon. That's an important cooldown to get rid of. But EXO aiming to flip the point for playing on the outskirts. They want to draw SSG close to them so that Chase can actually get value. And Hottie is so close, and he gets punched by Chase. The perfect execution on EXO when they smell blood in the water. And the Katsune rush was a risk from Landon to salvage the fight, but Chase has been let loose. Chase was able to get the engage there, but it was 35%, right? Like, it took them a long time to be able to actually get in there, and they got very lucky that Space Station disengaged off the point so that EXO could even take it. They do get to match that percentage, but Exoplivione, they've got to make these dives and these setups just a little bit faster if they want to make these fights clean. Oh! Oh, back oh, 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 Healing from landed saved. Oh, this, him. the Suzu. Oh my God! <laughs> and the composure of Funny Astro to not pop the beat too early. The dupe from Shockwave is immediately gone. Sound bear from Funny Astro. Crispy with his second SSG with all the space in the world. Exo trying to fight for it with the meteor strike in the middle of the team. As Chase looks to find environmental kills, but Funny Astro is luckier in that regard. And it's not a decisive fight yet, but with Landon missing, resources are thin for SSG, but EXO just don't have a good opportunity, don't have good sightlines to even put damage in, so it doesn't even matter how much healing SSG have. <sighs> I mean, it's what an expensive fight for Exoplivione, too. They expended four alts, like Shockwave's duplicate got deleted immediately, and then you also had the Meteor Strike, which is not going to be the most impactful ult when it comes to doing damage, but uh, looking at, like, uh, the sound barrier and the uh, just everything. Uh, Kanile is going to have this Katsune Rush, maybe? Oh, and Chase! That's what I mean! Great Let's opening pick. This. As soon as it's on the point, he's going to aim to punch someone out one of these doors. And now that SSG are playing that much closer to EXO, Chase can actually find value on this Doomfist. SSG's boon in these fights has been to keep the space within them as much as possible so Sparker can get picks and Chase won't get, can't get into punch distance. Yeah, I think that's exactly the point is if Chase is able to get a punch even against the wall, you're feeling good about that. And that was a much faster engage from Ex Oblivione as well. So this will be final fight if Ex Oblivione can win this. They win out the map. Everything is do or die right now for this first map in the series. Yeah, last fight. Overclock from Sparker forces Axo into hiding. They use a fake teleporter play, and maybe someone actually ended up taking it because Sparker is dead. And you got the sound barrier, Katsune Rush, massive advantage for SSG. Axo having that secondary tank and maybe more point presence thanks to Shockwave's dupe on the Mauga. I think really helped them not give up too much real estate to SSG throughout that. And Exo could just focus on getting stun uh, stunts with the Doomfist punches and it works out. Exo take Lijong Tower. I love the switch up that they made there. The Arisa was able to work for that one round, but then they identified, okay, maybe it's just not gonna be the call for market. Malga has too much territorial control over that point. And so what better way to be able to contend with that than to just play a little disruptive. That Ar Arisa takes a bit of time to be able to walk into that enemy line and do just, just punch in. I was worried about the Doomfist, but Doomfist's biggest weakness is CC. Namely, if, if Hottie were to ever swap to the Orisa, which I know is like a crime to say because I don't think he'll ever do that, but the Javelins would be the kryptonite to chase and now that there's no cc to stop him from punching in it had to be a positional like a macro uh way to beat chase to beat the doom fist and ssg had a handle of that they would just play at the very back of the point play long sight lines and axo couldn't get close you saw chase just maneuver around the map and he eventually was jumping over walls he had to be hidden in order to get close but one of my first times seeing a doom fist in this meta i'm i'm a fan I'm a big fan of it too, and this is where Chase's strength lies within this team is not only does he have very 
good understanding of the macro of team compositions, but he's also super versatile. He can play a ton of different tanks, and it takes a lot out of a team to be able to switch gears from playing an Orisa composition to now playing a Doomfist that just has a higher tempo. Uh, so I'm very impressed right now with Ex Oblivione's awareness to make those adaptations on the fly and change gears like that. And all the way to round three, though, the desk were talking about how not one sided, but how favored SSG were due to that level of experience. And it's really experience mm -hmm. and not necessarily level of play, because I think EXO can definitely hang. There's a reason why they're in the top four. And it really came down to, I think, a tank duel, in my opinion, because it was all about that space, how you're taking it, how you're giving up, how you're re-engaging, especially on this point of night market. It's such a dance where I've talked about a, num a number of times how control or just any game type with a control point, you can sometimes be baited to sit on the point. Me cap ob objective <laughs> unga bunga, but that's not like how Overwatch <laughs> is the best played. Yeah, not not always, but I love the point that you made there about Ex Oblivione. Uh, yes, Space Station Gaming on paper look more put together in terms of their team synergy, but Ex Oblivione have been working very, very hard. And, and that's not to say that Space Station hasn't, you know, but I think that the improvement that we've seen from Ex Oblivione is very palpable and you can tell that they have been putting in the effort to make sure that they know the ins and outs of every composition that they've played. And, you know, one of the other things I think about Space Station that does make it a little bit interesting to see how they're going to adapt in this situation is they did get criticism in the Overwatch League as London Spitfire for being a little one-dimensional. So can they actually bring something else out that may be able to disrupt the flow of Ex Oblivione when we have seen XOB, one of the few teams in EMEA so far, to make adjustments on the fly? Kind of like what we saw from Team Peps. Not scared to do that in the middle of a map. Yeah, when it comes to flexibility, you're either ENS or your team peps. And I'll let you decide which one you'd rather be, because sometimes being flexible but when you can't play all the heroes at a high level ends up hurting you in the end, because I'd rather see a team be more practice on one comp uh, than, than be flexible and not being able to execute things consistently at a high level. But the, sure. the winning comms here are really exciting. Let's hear it out. Someone, someone. Sim blue beam, sim first, sim first, sim first. Sim, 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 Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> my comp games of everyone spam hero name and it was so exciting. You can tell the clutch <laughs> factor there of EXO because that came down to the wire. I'm excited. I've been very interested to hear how teams all call out Malga. Because like if you if you say the name properly, that's that's a lot of different vocal sounds you're making. Like you don't yeah. say that quickly if you're trying to call out the Malga over and God. over again. <laughs> so I think I heard um, like um, from Ents like ma 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 ma. I was like so maybe <laughs> just to keep that in mind in your own <laughs> ranked games. Ooh, Psycho's in. Okay. The back one coming out. We don't see that super often. Yeah, I think Psycho comes in for that Tracer and the Echo. Sparkle yeah. remains in. Another roster update is Shockwave coming in over Cookie, which, you know, you talked about the flexibility that Shockwave had in the past. Yeah, I we so we did see Shockwave. It's Cloud that's uh, that's going to be taking that spot. Um, and, and Cloud does come in to play the Tracer, so maybe just leaning a little bit more heavily on a dive for both of these teams, right? Uh, because we have seen that one of the other looks that Space Station has that's very, very strong is their Winston dive. And the desk alluded to this, especially going over to Blizzard World. Dive has always been such a staple composition on a map like this. And while we ended up seeing the Malga versus the Orisa on the Ensign to some Minds matchup, we, we, I think the Widow, uh, the Widow, sorry, I was like, whoa, Widow? Uh, the Winston makes a lot of sense here for a space station to rely upon.
And there was actually quite a difference in the stats when it came to the Sojourns, very surprisingly. Cookie led, um, had more damage than Sparker by 6,000 and had uh, 11 more limbs than Sparker. So we talked about how Cookie is very underrated as a Sojourn player and Axo, like a lot of people kind of predict them to be in the top four, but at least ending in that fourth place spot. But the importance of having a good Sojourn on these large maps can be the, what begins and ends a fight uh, very quickly. Pedal Strat, Life Weaver Pedal Strat, Widowmaker sees nothing. All right. Uh, that is now 10 seconds off the clock here for Space Station, but it's always worth a shot because if you do get that random first pick, that is just a usually a point capture there for that attacking team. But Ex Oblivione, they're here to prove, I think, the, the doubters wrong in a way that they are going to end up in that fourth spot. And they have the opportunity to do that with Cloud on this Tracer generically being kind of like a Tracer one trick. And then Shockwave with the Ash has just been always so good with it when we've seen those hit scans from him in the past. SSG have to depend on this dive to pressure the high ground. So Hottie's established there, but with Arissa, you can play the point comfortably and just play the contest game because Arissa is just such a good anchor tank. She can hold space for much longer than most tanks. And Hadi and the Winston, this is his kryptonite. Uh, the Arissa can be aggressive in the bubble and actually force Hadi to jump out instead of go further in. So Hadi's had issues with Arissa players in the past. And we'll see if the experience that Chase has on the hero will, will be good for his team. Psycho so low. Oh, Sparker's so low. Everybody's so low at Space Station. Yeah, this is uh, hectic for SSG to try and divide and conquer Ex Oblivione's comp that will chase and then Shockwave gets a fight together. Well, it doesn't matter. When you have headshots from Landon come out like that and the sound bear allowed them to just keep W keying into Exo despite them rounding the corner. So that'll be a full take from SSG. Okay, we know the type of mechanical skill that Landon has of showing up the Baptiste as one of his best heroes. Now the Kiriko as well, being able to get a lot of work done that way. Didn't even have to use the Kitsune Rush there either, even though he did have that online to invest into that fight. But yeah, he really don't need to if you do just get those kunai headshots. Um, crispy though, what, what, a, what a pick from the Lucio. Huh. These Lucios can be a little demons sometimes. I, I don't expect it out of someone like Crispy though, but Axo stopping that momentum from SSG is big. Super big here because they also have the ultimate advantage. Uh, you can use kind of anything here, and I think you're feeling pretty confident in the success rate of that. Uh, whoa, Chase is a little deep though. I'd be a little worried about staying, overstaying your welcome, yeah. but... Well, he had Fortify and he managed to get out in time. Yeah, he had a, a second too late and Chase could have fell, but the Katsune Rush was there to help Ex Oblivione if that were to be a worse situation. So this is such a good choke for an Arisa team to hold. Yeah, and then you expended the Bob, but uh, you know, it just is kind of there to help you whittle away a bit more at that time bank. That Ash Dynamite though, look at how much pressure that's putting on Space Station. Oh, Buddy Asher almost brought the, that pulse to someone else, but a big pick for Cloud. Exo. Also, as Space Station walk in, can take flanks. This is not just like Orisa go run at them. This is Cloud finding his way into the back and get pulse bomb kills like that. Um, especially onto if you can force even the teleport out of Landon, or if you can have Funny Asher's mm -hmm. attention a little bit longer. This is important. SSG gonna just get to the high ground to force Chase around this corner. That's step one. Um, and Ex Oblivione are fine with this. Hey, look at how much pressure this dynamite is doing. Like you've got that combo of the, the dynamite and then Cloud going on that flank. And that combo can be so powerful, like Buddy Astro is just dead. Yeah, finally, yes, she made their way through the choke. That was a solid hold by Axo for a while. Got SSG, but SSG did manage to build up some ultimates from that. Not even really needing to use much in that process, but SSG have to go again, and Hadi has to jump in deep, but he's got the coach gun and the Lucio boobs to push him out of position. This is so annoying for Hadi to deal with. 
he already has to use that second jump to get out because he was low after getting CC'd like that. So that's another way that the Ash does come in clutch is being able to use that coach gun to get out of dodge when that Winston is trying to go after you. A little different than the soldier and slide because the the coach gun is, is just able to help you keep your position as well. Yeah, wasted Bob there. Um, wasn't aware around the corner where SSG was, and they ended up uh, rotating to the high ground. So, silver lining for SSG. I think they can try to dance around Chase a bit better, uh, making a force Chase to the low ground on the payload, and SSG dived the back line of Chase is out of position, but... Chase is wow. pulse. Nice, right? One pulse kill for Cloud, zero for Psycho. Keep track of that, and Hardy got burst in before he could use Primal. And this is so uncharacteristic for him. And the Katsune rush fight continues for SSG, but that is they don't have a good initiator with that Winston gone, so it's up to Sparker to make up for it. He's got a 1 HP Kirko around the corner and a Terra Surge that he got caught from. So Ex Oblivione may lose a member here and there, but they sure make these fights close. Now only one minute remaining though. Ooh, Hotty, okay. Taking them a little bit of time to be able to get the cart rolling again, but as soon as you start nearing the second objective, this is going to be the final attempt that Space Station have. Hottie holding onto the Primal Rage does feel nice in this instance because you can just bully away the rest of Ex Oblivione so you can ensure this cart's success. Oh, Pulse. Thought about throwing that to Crispy. Recalled to stay safe. Sparker down means Psycho has a lot of weight on his shoulders to deliver. The win for Space Station, and no, oh, Psycho hit <laughs> Chase. And I think Hottie with the Primal made Chase low enough for that to be a final blow. So SSG really close, four meters away, eight seconds. This is the hunt for a push, but the re-engage from the sound bear is huge. But Funny Astro is able to match it. So both ults neutralized. It's an all-out brawl. And now that Bob is on the point, Exo don't have to worry about contesting. But it's been shredded, all thanks to Sparker. And the Katsune Rush is the difference maker in this fight for SSG. The Sprite Chase getting good stuns with the punch. It's not enough to lock down SSG for much longer. And they will be capping point B. Good stall, though, because now you are left with that minimum time bank heading into the third point, and you also got Space Station to expend a ton of critical ultimates. So Ex Oblivione, yeah, they had to throw a little bit at that, but with this Kitsune Rush, you have a good engagement tool for this next fight, and Space Station do have limited time to work with, so you can get a lot done in this moment if you're Exo to take back control of this defense. No ults to worry about on SSG side. Needing to use the Katsune Rush for point B means EXO have that advantage to work with. Cloud marking Cycle on the Tracer. Make sure that SSG can't get any flanks. EXO can just contest the card, and that's the beauty of running an Arissa is you, could be, you have to be removed by force in order for the attacking team to get any progress going. And now EXO get themselves in position for Katsune Rush, and it's a beautiful lane set up. SSG ready with the speed, thanks to Funny Astro. And if you would have had Sound Barrier, there there could have been maybe a, a, a re-engage there, but SSG are going around. You've got one more attempt. You want to have as many ultimates as you can at this one, because it's going to be an uphill battle otherwise. So good to have this Katsune Rush to be able to go back in. And oh, the coach gun, Sparker's so low. Oh. You saw Cloud try to jump on that immediately. Landon is playing 52 pickup. Just trying to keep his team alive. Kitsune Rush from Landon. And what a good fortify from Chase to stop the bot from going too deep into his team. SSG still have a sound bear. Crispy's about to have his. Cloud will be back from spawn soon, and that respawn advantage is for EXO. Barriers exchange around the same time. Terra Surge to try and shred that overheld down. SSG have their own Terra Surge and no barrier to work with. Hoping to catch that Lucio at one. Psycho gets the finish. Now you shred the armor from Hottie thanks to that pull spawn from Cloud. But Sporker has all the space in the world to take down every member of EXO, and SSG will cap in overtime. Space Station is showing us, too, that they can also play the Orisa. 
<clears throat> Arisa was such a good gap closer in this final point, and it's always going to be a little bit difficult to get those Winston jumps and keep yourself safe when you have so many different corridors that the enemy team can hide around. So I love being able to see this from Space Station. They've got a great coach and Christopher to help put them on the right path to success and somebody who also knows this team inside and out. I love to be able to see those strategies come through, and that was the little bit of extra je ne sais quoi, I guess, to be able to get that car over the line. But mm -hmm. we have some team comms we're going to be listening into as we get ready for this side swap. S1. S no coach. No coach. No, okay. no result. Yeah, I've, I have, I have. Don't worry about me. I point. Lulu in the corner. Push me, push, guys. Push me, push. Yeah, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu in the back. The one. Or we are we Cam stuck. Cam, Cam, Cam is just poking me. That's one. Nice. 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 That was such a good Terra Surge out of Chase because it almost forced the C9 out of SSG and you heard it in the comms that Hottie said, I got it, jumped in and kept the drive going and SSG capped because of that. That's how important communication is and SSG have the synergy to, to deal in those hectic moments. The synergy, but also the confidence. You have to be able to trust your main tank in these situations because they are the ones that are leading the charge. Maybe not always necessarily making those shot calls, but you got to know that they are able to hold down that front line for you. And we are going to get these side swaps now, and it is going to be a hottie on the Arisa for the defense and Chase on the Winston. Once again, we see this battle between the monkey and the horse, and... Uh, the monkey may be loose in the jungle right now. <laughs> yeah, like, Winston is a good gap closer, but doesn't hold space as well as an Orisa, hence why Hadi, I think, is running this on the defense. We never get to see Hadi swap to something like this, so... SSG have to rely on him, and he hasn't have... He doesn't have any armor, but they got some good javelins and good enough damage for someone like Psycho to go in and clean up all the kills, so what a retake out of SSG. Good disengage and then re-engage their funny Astro, again, one of the best Lucios in the world, has been such a huge boon to this team. Just to make sure that all of those comms are going to be clear and the game plan is easily executed. I always have this sound barrier too, by the way. So not only is he helping in terms of the healing, but also the damage output from funny Astro is insane to have that online already. SSG. Just need to have Hottie drop to contest that. I don't think anyone else really needs to. And well, uh, who cares? Because Sparker's just going to get first picks like that. Shockwave isn't as lucky with his sight lines. Um, so XL are going to have to reset. And that pick on the Funny Astro doesn't matter too much. XL are losing a lot more bodies in this fight. And SSG just has to burn two more minutes. And with no ultimates used either. How nice is that? That they were able to get that with just a very neutral fight. Now they have a lot with the half time bank that Exoplione have. So uh, Space Station, like, they should be able to convert here. Knowing that Psycho does have this pulse bomb, he's been really good at being able to just be sneaky in the back line. Maybe not necessarily always landing those, but I think you're feeling okay. Tune rush from XO to establish themselves on the point. They got Hottie really low. The focus fire needs to be there. But Hottie rounds the corner and gets the sound barrier. That was a critical kill that XO needed to take. And now they're forced to use all these ultimates. And with 90 seconds left, if they don't, if XO don't pull out a win, this is looking dire. This is looking full holdable. But SSG have lost their tracer, but they're so established on the point that I have more confidence in SSG in this fight, especially with Chase back on the high ground. They need to find access to someone like Sparker, who, again, got low, and the execute wasn't fast enough out of EXO. They're fumbling these final moments, but the final tick is in sight of EXO. But SSG are so good at contesting. Hadi is low. This needs to be SSG's mo or EXO's moment to engage, and these windows of opportunity are so short, and EXO haven't found them quite yet. They are good on the initial dives, but they need to be aggressive. Chase down to 100 HP, disengages at the right time, but SSG are not dying until this very moment. EXO even built a second Kitsune Rush, and that will be 
the uh, the T's that are crossed, the I's that are dotted for Exo to finally get the point. That was looking very dire, though. Coming down to the wire, needed to make sure that they had that Kitsune Rush online. It's just like getting the extra cherry on top. And we've seen how much that work can be done when you do get that rush as just kind of the, the extra. But Ex Oblivione, they got their work cut out for them. They still have to make it through the second phase. They have an opportunity to maybe finish out this map with more than a minute, which is the win condition that they're looking for, but they've got to make these dives flawless. This is where the win state becomes even more impactful on the second point when you get a chance to play around Pylon, but Space Station is wrapped around the team. This is looking so cooked for EXO, like their Winston is nowhere near this team. EXO are very split, maybe that's a strategy, maybe it's an int, and Soundbear from Space Station keeps them up as they figure out what the plan is from EXO. But this Light Bear from Crispy versus the Katsune Rush of Landon, Primal Rage from Chase, a lot of ults from EXO are being used just like last fight, and it didn't net them a single kill. EXO are already at a time bank disadvantage, and it's taking them forever to get anything done. Oh. Oh, that is one of the risks you run playing the dive is you get could get like that's a stagger but like one of the risks running the dive is we've seen this from ex oblivione that it took them a little bit on Lijing when they were running the doom fist it took them like 40 seconds to actually make a meaningful engage and it's doing the same here as space station are making these fights way faster pace so that ex oblivione are selling for even more time to actually get the setup they need to jump a target and also what target do you actually go after because everybody can kind of just get out of dodge that's why I think it's very tough to run a Winston comp and why I'm a Winston hater. Uh, because with an Orisa, you can just play around your Orisa and it's you're waiting for the Orisa comp to make a mistake. Maybe like this one. Hadi is one HP. Landon, no idea where he is. Maybe dead or teleported out. And that's the opening that Exo needs, but they have less than a minute. So this next fight has to be perfect because if you get stalled here, this is going to be just a dead push. And so capitalize on these picks. This is going to be good staggers if they're able to follow up. And that's the type of overextension that you need to do with a dive composition so that you can actually finish off the kills. Exo were using ults, getting people low, but not taking the risk of rounding corners and finding SSG in their safe cover. SSG just use the Terra Surge maybe for the quick fortify and maybe to finish off a low HP target. It doesn't work out. And SSG's respawns are that much closer. And this is last fight, by the way. 13 seconds. And Exo were died with 2% sound barrier. Chase didn't use Primal Rage for whatever reason. Shockwave has an overclock, but he's the only person there. And someone has to recontest for the overtime. So this was a monumental fumble. And Space Station are destined to even up our series one to one crispy sound barrier did extend the fight for a while but it's exo uh, exo Blivione trying to put a band-aid on a sinking ship and ssg are in cleanup mode oh I, chase is stalling for so much time but because that overtime wick has already been burning for a while as chase jumps away to finish off the support it is going to be it there for that map and yeah we've got a series now on our hands already back and forth between these two teams Lijing tower was very favorable there for ex oblivione but space station don't forget they did get around so it was still a very close map to begin with yeah, Winston is very hard to play on Blizzard World because especially point B is just the longest part. Your jump can only go so far. We need Winston to get some leg day going because his gap close is good, but not that good. And yes, they can take positions around the map, but guess what? You need to kill something to win a, to win a fight. And that's what Axo really lacked, even in the old fights, even in the vanilla fights. They even got disjointed at moments. There were signs of life out of Axo on point B when they extended all the way into the point C area. And that's the type of eagerness that you need out of a dive comp. Otherwise, the Arista can bully the Winston out very quickly and you lose all of that momentum you're trying to generate with the Winston. The dive is also just hard to run if you aren't a team that's playing together. I mean, I mean like, 
where is the setup? Like, uh, we were talking about how long it can actually take for this dive to actually get off the ground. And if you don't have, like, Cloud in a position, Shockwave as well, focusing on the same targets as you do for, like, Sparker and Psycho, then it can be very difficult to actually get this dive to find the success it wants to have as a comp. And two, like, Space Station, they're getting so many picks, so many staggers, that it's delaying that setup time even more. And so... Uh, Exo just ran out of time, frankly. Yeah, Psycho did a good job of focusing his pulse bombs a lot on Chase, and because um, Winston doesn't have uh, damage mitigation the way Orisa does, because Orisa can pop Fortify and live through the pulse bomb most of the time, unless that armor is shredded. So just Winston is a lot weaker in these extended fights, because it did take a while for these fights to break down, and the Orisa has a lot more damage mitigation, like I said, than a Winston bubble and can hold the space well. So it was a good choice by Hottie to swap to that, and that translates in the stats really does uh, and i'm excited to see hottie continue to bring out more of these tanks because we know he can play a lot but it's m kind of is the team actually comfortable being able to switch up some of these strategies and i'm happy to see that the answer to that is yes we were asking the question like can they bring something else out to be able to play against the huge variety of compositions that we can see coming out of exo and we might have to see yet another switch up as we look over to Esperanza. It's not always Winston here, and it should not be. It should not be Winston on this map. But we've seen a lot of Malga. We've seen a lot of Arissa be able to take these streets. Mm -hmm. And just pointing out some stats to kind of amplify our points between the tank differences. Chase had nine deaths, Hottie with four. It's, you know, a difference of hero and... Um, survivability that you have more on the Arisa when high grounds are important sure but the way that exo um the way that uh sorry uh ssg play i know they like kind of swap usually it's the it's hottie <laughs> that plays winston but the way ssg anchored down with the Arisa is what made hottie so unkillable and then that translates into the tracer stats because psycho is going to look better in his deaths in his damage focusing down a winston at thirteen thousand damage versus and four deaths versus clouds 11 deaths and nine thousand damage when cloud has to chase and Orisa, which is a lot more difficult. There's a lot more threat when there's a javelin to your face that can come out of nowhere, and that's an insta-death for a tracer. While as a Winston, he zaps, he, he tickles, but he's not got that crazy pick potential versus a tracer. The disruptor shots from Sparker, too. It forces the tracer into a disadvantageous position. Maybe you're forcing her out of a health pack room or just into the loving arms of someone else's damage on Space Station's side. And so hats off to Sparker, too, to be able to shut down those corridors that Cloud may have wanted to go in with that tracer, making it a little bit easier to pick off. But it is going to be more of the Winston here. To be fair, we have seen Ex Oblivione opt to play the Winston for you from Chase on Esperanza, but Space Station have looked good on the Sarissa, and Ex Oblivione were not able to break that on Blizzard World, but can they change up the play style here or play around this architecture in a different way in order to make this Winston viable? And the Winston's goal here is to make Sparker as uncomfortable as possible. This will be the best target, and obviously the Sojourn's going to jump out. But once that jump is out, someone like Cloud can chase down that kill, or Shockwave can have a free sightline without worrying about another Sojourn shooting them and marking them uh, in that case. So Chase needs to just force out cooldowns, but then the kills need to follow afterwards. So this may not just all fall on Chase or Winston players in general. It needs to be a unified team effort. For now, EXO are just dancing around, playing with their food, contesting the bot until they see the right opportunity for a dive onto Sparker. Uh, Shockwave 2, a little bit low there, does get healed up by Kanile, and that is going to help get this Katsune Rush online a little bit faster, but it's now, again, Sojourn versus Sojourn, Shockwave versus Sparker, who can get the leg up in this matchup and open up with a pick. Oh, but it's just such a stalemate. No one wants to push that bridge side, because that's where the Sojourns are going to be. You open yourself up to getting dove on by a Winston, and yes, even the Orisa can quickly run at you too with the Javelin Spin, so both teams know that this could lead them to match point. You don't want to take outrageous risks. 
as SSG have the Katsune Rush. Exo are about to get theirs. It's an early pull there by Landon just to take control of this underbridge side and force Exo into that back corner. But it doesn't net them any kills. Exo were in hiding and they popped their Katsune Rush in response once the other one expired. And it gave Exo an opening to dive in when SSG were close and Shockwave can let loose as well. Beautiful fight out of Exo. A beautiful, very economic fight at that, too. Uh, so now Ex Oblivione able to even up the meterage and maybe get a, just a touch more progress. But I have a feeling we're going to see something very similar to what we saw in our first series of the day, which is push just being so back and forth because Space Station can also take really good engagements. But did you see how the Shockwave is locking down this tiny room? I would be worried about Space Station making it out of here when you've got the Disruptor shot and a charged railgun as a potential in that space. Yeah, Hottie can be the one who contests the bot and the rest of SSG can stay hidden. So Exo don't want to get desperate and dive into that room because it'll be over for them. And Chase is going in and out. SSG are scared to push this bot too because Exo could be hidden above in these rooms. Now it's the overclock from Shockwave from the top row, but he gets tossed there by a javelin throw. Body, sound barrier two, SSG, got a lot of sustain here. And the Terra Surge stopped Crispy from using a sound barrier and he still has it. But that speed potential from Exo is gone and SSG know that. So they're taking the engage advantage that they have and they're chasing every kill. Exo got to run and chase. Feels like he has to use the primal just to survive. And Crispy, well, if we're going to invest, let's do it all together. Sound barrier from Exo, they reestablish on the bot, but there's no kill. Shockwave doesn't have good sight lines and Cloud needs the whole team to be in the fight for him to be elusive on the flank. So, Kitsune Rush is up next. Exo keep investing. Great pulse bomb out of Cloud. Takes care of Landon. Not a lot of heals or damage left from SSG. So, these fights take forever. But Exo's patience pays off. If it... If you first do, you don't succeed, try, try again is I think how that saying goes. And if the first ultimate doesn't work, then just throw another one. And yeah, it does pay off for Exoplivione. It was very, very expensive, but it wasn't without merit knowing that Space Station was also investing ultimates into that fight. Uh, it's still kind of null here as we come back to the neutral part of Esperanza. Uh, but I'm looking at Psycho here to try to be a big difference maker. Maybe get a pulse bomb online here for Space Station and try to nail down this Lucio or something from X yeah, I like yeah, I like the hottie wins the swap, and I know this is going to be weird of me to say, but Space Station were You like Winston? I know, I know, it's rare, but it is hottie, so... <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> Which is a difference. <laughs> SSG were just anchoring. They weren't doing anything. Exo were dictating all these fights. Now SSG can start dictating some of these fights, and Hottie is going to feel comfortable in the mirror anyway. Um, so I'm glad he's back on the Winston, and especially if he's happy, I'm happy. SSG not super happy now that Exo are getting more and more progress and closer to that checkpoint. Yeah, usually, like, when, when you see the Winston matchup, I feel like it does force the hand of the other team a little bit, especially when Hottie is a very competent Winston. And with the Primal Rages, too, Hottie just has so much survivability as well. But it comes down to, can you burst down these Winston bubbles long enough? And Overclock is one way to do that. And late, a sound beer from Crispy may have given Exo the edge, but no kills came out through all of that. You got the Katsune rushes too. Still nobody dying. This is just the ultimate stalemate between both these teams where if it stays this way, Exo are gonna win because they're in the lead currently, but they're gonna let Space Station get some progress to the neutral point. Exo are back to the bridge. You're waiting for the back line to get traded. I you have to go after like a DPS or maybe even like a Kiriko. Just limit that amount of healing or damage output. And it's, it's such a tough one. Tracer versus Tracer though. Uh, Psycho and Cloud are trying to get the one up of each other, but oh, a Shockwave. That's going to be a huge pick here for Space Station. Well, Sparker at least got the one up on Shockwave and this will force Exo to the corner and Psycho goes and pulses Chase while he's low. And SSG have now taken the lead and head towards the checkpoint that Exo will hopefully be in position to contest. Wait, the hottest position here is so funny. With the Primal Rage, uh, you can kind of guarantee the checkpoint if someone is going to try to come in from that avenue. Maybe you pop the Primal, but to shut off that flank, 
Uh, there is a contest here from Exo, though. But for how long? They got to back up. They just back up. Yeah, just dive comps are just so in and out. Like, you can't really stay in one place and, and contest for much longer unless these Sojourns can finish off these low HP targets from the smash of the Winston. And the tracers can synergize at the right time. It's all a timing thing with these guys. So a lead swings in SSG's favor. He got the primal from Chase and Hottie as they counter dive each other's teams. Hottie gets a bit more success, pinning Shockwave against the wall. Chase didn't have that same luck. So SSG uh, will continue their push. Can Continuing their push for now with the Katuna Rush as well. This is a good opening for them to be able to just kind of keep opening up this fight. The streets face, everybody has to run here. Uh, it says she is, they went to take more space. They lost somebody in the process. Sparker couldn't establish on the high ground. They didn't have all the space to do so. The sound bears even made that fight look more even than it was. Exo will stabilize, but unfortunately didn't contest the forward checkpoint. They let Space Station get up to 74 uh, meters, and now there's less than two minutes left. That's a pretty good lead that Space Station has accumulated now, and they are able to just get back into this one of those forward spawns, and this is where things start to get a little bit tricky here for Ex Oblivione. They only have two fights that they have to win, but they are going to have a little bit of time to try to figure out how they want to actually approach this next fight. They have a couple of things that they can work with here, but that neutral has been so difficult for either team to break. And uh, one of our teams called for a pause, thankfully, after the fight was all over. But there's a pretty solid lead for Space Station, and our series is tied 1-1. It's not like a crazy, uh, insurmountable lead at 75 meters. I, th I usually start getting really worried and sweaty after 85 plus. <laughs> so this is definitely a comebackable, if that's a word for Exo. <laughs> Still still in the lexicon of Overwatch is, the, is comebackable, but that's what I was saying though, right, is that with these neutral fights, even though there is still a minute and 45 to work with and that lead is not too big for Space Station, these fights in the neutral have been so long that how much time do you actually have left in order to close that distance and take the lead away from Space Station. So Ex Oblivione still have their work cut out for them if they aren't gonna be able to take this fight super fast. Yeah, I, I'm still a fan of Hottie swapping off the Orisa because it was, the Orisa was fine, but it was, what did you want to accomplish in these fights? Did you just want to stall out Exo forever and ever? Uh, or did you actually want to try and get progress and, and get to dictate your own fights? But we go back into the game to find out how Hottie and friends can maintain this lead. Because for now, Exo have to dance around Shockwave charged rail. There's a lot of cover on that bridge side thanks to that half wall. So it'll be difficult for, for Shockwave in that position. Yeah, but if you're stalling for time, then what better way to do it than with the Winston? Because it's still going to be tough for anybody to get a first pick when these bubbles are covering so much territory. Uh, these tracers marking each other down means that these supports are going to be way more safe than what they would be but oh look at that sound barrier and they throw the katsune down uh, on the bridge if you're ssg to fight through that sound barrier push and psycho as that barrier expired gets a pulse bomb kill but the friends of exo have been so aggressive that they trade kill for kill with both kirikos down it's all about how you unify as a team. And I'm seeing more of that out of EXO now that the late stage of the fight is taking place. And as this year, Hadi is using Primal to toss Crispy to another planet, I guess. But it's, <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go. That worked though, because you're pushing Exo Oblivione back even just a little bit, and Chase has to pop the Primo just to get away. Uh, Hadi though, taking a wrap around to get back to the rest of his team. 30 seconds left, Jen. This could be it. It all comes down to this, Axo. Such a slow burn to get any progress, and Chase is down. Would have loved that Primal to keep surviving through this, but the Katsune rush from Exo and the 4v5 gives them a chance to, I guess, es escape the fight. They couldn't really fire back, and Adi is so aggressive. Will not let uh, Exo find any safety in this fight. But as Hadi extended, so did the rest of the team, and Exo getting critical headshots to take members away from SSG. It's a 
three versus three, and the EXO are taking the bot, keeping this overtime alive. Two more fights, though, still. Exoblivione can't get up the car either. Cloud is down, but Shockwave popping the overclock here is able to really open up the doors for Exoblivione. Oh. We need to see this Kiriko 1v1, too. He's, uh, is against Psycho, and that's what's keeping the overtime wick burning. Chase got back just in time, but if, if that Kiriko died, it wouldn't matter how that Exo fight went. The overtime would have went away. So a big contest out of Chase to support that Kiriko as the fight took place on two different portions of the map. Exo have to go all the way to win the map. Yeah, but they got the point capture. It's going to stall for a little bit of time for Space Station to be able to get back into this. And they're going to be coming in with a pulse bomb in the overclock here for Sparker. A checkpoint accomplished. The lead, the win for Exo around the corner. SSG just need to win one fight in this overclock from from Sparker. He has to jump through the overhaul, but he gets knocked out cold by Chase. And Exo search forward. They'll get some progress on this bot. SSG have mobile people to maybe contest but EXO are taking all the space in the world and you got Meteor Strike if you're Chase. You can play aggressive and stop the response. Funny Asher would be the one to contest and Psycho got killed! EXO make the comeback of a lifetime to take the map! <laughs> that was so close. Except Livione though, like, just good awareness of how to be able to play around the ultimates that we saw from Space Station, the Winston positioning as well. Like, the reason why we've seen this from Chase is that, like, despite maybe you being a little bit of a Winston hater, I do think <laughs> that Chase has still shown up to play on the Winston and Exoblivione. They were playing to their own strengths on this map, forcing Space Station to have to make the swap. That speaks volumes to know that, like, okay, yeah, like, Ex Oblivione, they're, they're doing a good job with these comps to have to force that switch. That was so losable for Exo. And I, that's why you just kept hearing me talk about Exo, because it was about Backable, them. Losable, winnable. So <laughs> losable. Because um, Kanile, Kanile in a 1v1 versus Psycho, if he would have lost that, overtime goes away. The car, uh, the bot was on the other side of the map because K Kanile was escorting it away because he had to, because it was overtime and the bot moves. So it, that's what he had to do in that moment. And Psycho, that's a tough 1v1. Then Chase came back as the Doomfist because that's just faster of a rollout than the Winston. And Chase showing up, knocking out Sparker too during that overclock gave Exo the edge in that moment to get the last uh, few meters to go. And then Psycho can recontest. I don't know who killed him. You would get a shiny sticker, but that was so losable for Axo and it came down to these really, really clutch moments. And I say comeback of a lifetime because how that map started, I would have not called Axo a winner. They, the most progress they got was at the very end in overtime. And they got so little done. These fights took every second. I felt I was aging so fast <laughs> watching this map. Um, and that's because Space Station were just so good at contesting and wasting time. Exactly. Those neutral fights took forever. And so that was what I was so scared of after coming back from that pause is it took a minute for them to actually fight the neutral, figure it out. And then you had that overtime where we have seen so many teams just be allergic to the objective. So I think you put it put it pretty well with there where Ex Oblivion were backs against the wall in that situation, having a lot of different ways they could have lost that fight, but they were still able to get the job done so credit to them 2-1 in the series Exoblivione could come out on top here after this fourth map and we're going to be going over to our flashpoint map type uh, the more chaos ensuing yeah. maybe even more doom fist honestly from exo and we have some substitutions coming in in a second. So we'd like to point out the stats of, you know, whenever there's crazy gaps. So everyone in chat can write DPS diff, tank diff, support diff, whatever. But it's also important to highlight when there is a really close matchup. Like Sparker and Shockwave pretty much had the same amount of damage. The eliminations are a bit different. 17 for Shockwave and Sparker at 7 tells me, you know, Shockwave is involved in these fights a lot. But Sparker is still able to match his damage. That was really close. Hottie and Chase deaths got a lot closer too five for hottie chase for three and i i told the stats people to to really track those deaths because that was what was a big difference for me on blizzard world stats would suggest that if you are dead you can't do damage um <laughs> that isn't so real for that one uh but yeah i think it does 
say a little bit more even just based on the meterage that we saw on Esperanza, like just how close it was, because you don't get that type of uh, closeness in the stats if you aren't also matching that as well. I mean, it, it, if for some reason one of those teams had ended up getting like a, a 120 meters on the board, those stats look very, very different. Um, but heading over to Suravasa, this is where... Uh, Compositional differences can can be a huge bane or boon to a team, but we do have a sub coming in for Exoblivione. Cloud out, Cookie back in, as we saw on our very first map of the series. Cookie playing the Sojourn and then Shockwave being able to flex around a little bit more, whether it's with the Echo, can also play the Tracer, can also just play any hit scan under the sun. Uh, so I think that Exoblivione here just set up for success when it comes down to the flexibility in those DPS roles. Yeah, Cloud had a little bit less damage than Psycho, but also less, less death. So Cloud is just a safe, consistent player to have. And now you need uh, the Sojourn <laughs> Alpha to come back in for Cookie, giving Shockwave some, some options of playing something other than the Sojourn. So yeah, Exo on match point after this, after the crazy Esperanza. And this could be a big upset because the desk were saying as a sheep were these big favorites. But we'll yeah, see. but I mean, you and I were also saying at the beginning of the series that like, I, I don't think that the gap is as big as what people are saying that it is. And I think Ex Oblivione as well would self attest to that, that they are an easy contender to be able to get like a third place, a second place. Maybe even get the first place with a little bit of practice, but it's been difficult for these teams to find their footing in this meta when we have seen the Malga change come through, then it got reverted, teams are still going to play the Malga anyway, and everybody just has their own identity when it comes to these team comps and how they want to actually play, but hmm. It's it, the, the Winstons have gone away. It makes sense on this map. You just don't have nearly as much high ground to play around with. But as we saw from Space Station, this Arisa look uh, coming out even in the group stages, it's going to be another thing that they get to rely upon here. And it was working out well for Hadi when he did make that switch. So Shockwave versus Psycho on the Tracer, Sparker and Cookie on the Sojourn. So Shockwave has to kind of change up his play style, and Tracer's the most difficult hero in the game to play, in my opinion, in terms of understanding your engages and your positioning in these fights. Now this first point is neutral, and if you guys thought Esperanza was a stalemate, wait to see how this one goes, because both teams haven't taken insane risks. I see Space Station being a bit more aggressive just behind Hottie, and being not afraid to overextend, because he really trusts Landon to output that healing. And SSG, again, bully Exo off the point and already capped, so the longer this goes, the better for that. A little bit of space being given here and there. Ex Oblivione waiting for an opportunity to go in with his Arisa cooldowns and, uh... Ooh. I might have to back yeah. out of this one now. If you guys are just gonna stare at each other lovingly, that's <laughs> where the Sojourns are, are gonna make a splash. So good first pick there out of Sparker and a smart disengage out of Exo. Just would rather take a 5v5 fight more confidently. But now this is so much more progress over to Space Station and oh, jeez. <laughs> Exo thought they had the macro to just rotate around and take a different entry, but SSG read that like a book and Chase almost got first pick because of it. And that forced an early Katsune rush for Axo, but no kills came in. So uh, it's a Katsune rush re-engage from SSG using the sound bear to support Hottie in his craziness, fully charging that Terra Surge to kill Chase. And that is a cool combo out of SSG, 98 plus percent. First point goes to SSG. Really cleanly too. Uh, Explosione, yeah, they, they just kind of waited around. Whether you're waiting for cooldowns or not, you should probably do that a little bit out of the line of fire. And uh, Space Station able to convert over with the uh, with very very few tools expended in that fight. They're also able to make it to this point first. We gotta wait a little bit for this flash point to unlock, but it still gives Space Station the ability to set up here. Hottie's very low though. Has to use a fortify to get away. Oh, but the speed too from Crispy, or uh, sorry, from Buddy Astro is what helps save Hottie too and get him into a safer spot. And SSG are running and the poke is 
catching them a little bit. Spark gets a responding one. I don't even know where Shockwave was. And an overclaw from Cookie is interesting. He thought as a sheep were going to fight after that psycho pick, but Cookie is going to do his best to find sight lines thanks to Chase Javelin, uh, Javelin spinning forward. That's a verb. And Axo have cap first. Exo capping first and also getting a meaningful amount of progress on the splash point as well. But I understand the overclock usage there by Cookie. Just knowing that you had a member of your team down on Exo, you didn't want Space Station to feel confident to be able to move in and actually capitalize on that player loss. But Space Station are also back here as a full team of five, ready to use this rush as a response to Canales. Kitsune Rush plus Overclock, Sparker go burr, but it's tough to get any kills and Terra Surge from Chase to maybe line things up for Cookie on the opposite end. But Exo are the ones that have the point captured, so they're benefiting from how long this is taking, and Hottie charged it too long. Thought Bunny Asher would have the barrier, he was 2% away. And it's a micro fumble, and Exo used their barrier to take advantage of this weekend moment out of SSG. And it's 100 to zero uh, for Axo on the second point to even things up 1-1. Yeah, Psycho can't even get away from that either. It's uh, not a stagger that particularly matters when you're still going to have to try to rotate to this next flashpoint. But uh, when you look at how Space Station attacked on some of those fights, like they just kept getting held at bay. Uh, once you take control of Gardens, there's only a couple of different ways that you can actually access that point. So Ex Oblivione playing around that very, very smart. But now we're back over to Temple. Very, very tiny little flashpoint uh, with uh, less room to hide. Ooh, try to hide from this pulse bomb. Oh, but Psycho Recall just didn't know where Shockwave Recall too, and they both have pulses, so I like that boop out of Crispy, making sure he can protect Shockwave in that moment. Again, sometimes playing on the point exposes you to a lot of poke as the other team can surround you, and pulse gets thrown right in, right in the fire. Shockwave dispersed SSG in that moment. Kitsune Rush available first out of Exo. Sound Baron response though from Buddy Astro and the cap goes through from SSG. And this, all this time can benefit them, but they're not even gonna let time for Exo to re-engage as Cookie hopes to protect the team. And the front line was won by Exo. Exo have done a great job at punishing sometimes that over aggression out of SSG. It just seems like sometimes they aren't on the same page. Going back to the final moments of Gardens, Hottie going in with the Terror Surge, Funny Astro not ready to engage with the sound barrier to keep Hottie alive. Uh, it could sometimes happen in the thick of these fights, but Space Station, they are the type of team that isn't going to let that phase them come back into this one with a clear game plan like this rush as well as this pulse bomb. Exo still in control. I'm kind of dealing with, as, as a G, we're dealing with Shockwave on the flank, and now that he's recalled out, you start the Katsune rush. If you're landing, sound beer from Chris Beat to keep them up and chase. Oh, he dies to the Terra Surge. He had his own to maybe pop to get the Fortify, but just didn't have enough confidence to make that decision. And that'll cost Exo and their control of that point. And SSG back in the driver's seat. A little bit of differential to work up to, but you're 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 feeling okay about it. Uh, Sparker, especially with the overclock, Cookie already expended it to no avail. So Sparker now gets a chance to set up with this. But I'm curious to see how Exoblivione is going to actually approach this point because knowing that that overclock is available, you have to be a little tricky with it in order to bypass a lot of that damage. Oh, SSG are so close to taking back the lead. The longer this goes, the better chase! Oh my god, almost got pushed off the map. Hottie was feeling it. Now both Arissa's cooldowns are out, and these javelins can hurt. Shockwave is lucky he got to even recall in that moment. There wasn't any follow-up from Hottie's javelins uh, throw. Sparker with an overclock. This is such a tough point to get a good sideline, but this is a cool high ground. This will force Exo into hiding, but now they can't because it's 99% for SSG. The Katsune rush helps Exo get a leg up, but Funny Astro gives SSG so much sustain in this fight for the point. And Hadi, both of wrists actually exchanged, so it's coming down to these DPS. Psycho's pulse uh, missed and didn't get the execute. And Exo are running out of gas, running out of tools, and taking advantage of these environmental kills. It's always traded one for one. SSG just need to zone Exo off long enough for overtime to go away.
and it's not been clean. Two versus one. Shockwave recalls in a 1v2 versus Psycho and Sparker. And he deals with Sparker, but not with Psycho. So Psycho comes out on top, and SSG are on map point of Suravasa. It still would have gone the way of SSG, knowing that Hadi was also right there. I think Crispy went a little bit too deep. Oh, chasing after that kill onto Funny Astro, was able to get it, but then was away from the rest of the team in order to deliver that critical healing in those final moments. But we still have one more flashpoint for Ex Oblivione to be able to bring it back, or Space Station tied up. This could very well be a map five with how Space Station have been playing these points. They've been playing very cohesively, despite maybe a couple of fumbles here and there in terms of that uh, just working together but I think you're you're on a good path space station as well with the terror search <laughs> it's going a little bit deep but knows for sure I think the funny astro won't have the sound barrier this time yeah it needs to be careful how he uses that terror search but SSG one point away from forcing game five cookies overclock disperses parts the seas SSG respecting that so first cap goes to exo and re-engage will be available from XO2 with the Kitsune Rush. Will be the overclock from Sparker. Shockwave could try to hunt him down with a pulse bomb, but Sparker seems to have all the space in the world to operate. But now the trickle damage forces him into cover, and SSG won't seem to be able to take advantage of that moment to get on the point and capture it. They're trying, but there's always a good test from either Shockwave or Chase. Kitsune Rush this time from SSG, matched by the sound bear of Crispy. Haughty, Terra Surge right at the entry. Oh, but the pulse, I think on Suzu or the barrier saved them in time. Terra Surge from Chase, just to push them out of the point and zone them off. SSG, man, this fight is taking forever and they're coming out on top slowly but surely. But because Exo had the early cap, they're at, they're basically at one fight away from forcing the final point of Suravasa. Yeah, they are. Uh, if Ex Oblivione can win this next one, then they will be going to that final flashpoint of Palace. But Space Station here, uh, they've been so good at being able to just get first picks in a lot of these fights, even if it's taking a little bit long. I mean, Space Station have also been able to be on the receiving end of just this extra sustain in these extra long fights. So now that they have control, let's see a 70% coming out of them, I think, before we do see a full engage from EXO. Yeah, eco fight. EXO used everything. Everybody used everything last fight. Psycho with a pulse bomb, though. Very soon. Yeah. Pulse bombs are so hit or miss, literally. Because it's so Zoning hard Zoning pulse hit. bomb. Rue <laughs> and the Suzus have been on point from these Kirikos, so... Oh, Shockwave won't get to use his, so Psycho will have all the freedom in the world. Kitsune rush from Exo to make up for this 4v5. But no kills really follow up. They may just capture the point, but no, SSG re-engage off of Hadi, jumping in, having the barrier, have the Kitsune rush, and SSG has the ult built up in time. They forced Exo off. There is no other options for Exo except the heroic performance out of Shockwave. It's at Sparker's feet, but it wasn't a stick. He didn't even need to jump out. And who is jumping out is Exo. SSG seconds away from taking Surabasa and sending us to a map five. And there's no more contest left. SSG forced the deciding map. Final map, map number five, great series. We've had some good Overwatch today, Lemon Kiwi. It's been already uh, hitting the ground running with that Twisted Minds as an end matchup. And now we've got a map five. I'm so pumped. Oh. That, these fights are making me age in real time. Like, they're taking <laughs> so long. But that's a good thing for them because they know how to just play this chess uh, this chess match of going in, going out, and respecting the other ultimates being used. And instead of just mirroring the ultimates all the time, they take the more guaranteed fight afterwards. That's why this has been so back and forth. But our next map has already been chosen, Shambali Monastery by Space Station. Going back to some of the moments within this game, I think like um, one of the ways that Space Station are just really good at these control and chaotic oriented maps is that they they take no prisoners when it comes to chasing down some of these 
picks. Like you, you saw Hottie just being able to go mark down a couple of the squishy targets there with Psycho. Uh, Psycho does a good job of being able to close the distance on a lot of those low health targets and follow up on those picks. And Lennon as well, those Suzus were so beautiful. And that is how Kiriko is able to find that value in these compositions is making sure that the team is going to stay alive even when like Hottie, Spark are very low. Landon always coming in to make sure that he can save the day. And it goes back to what we used to see from him in those immortality field timings. So clean with it. What a fun map that was. Game five. Who would have thought? I thought the game five would have, if there were to be one today, would have came out of Ents and Twisted Minds. But this one is a nail biter with so aiming for it for the upset if you want to call it that and ssg trying to find the right composition whether it's the winston mirror or falling back to some orissa orissa's very meta on suravasa and maybe that's why ssg choose to go to uh shambali because it is a very orissa friendly map it is. Uh, maybe we can also see some Sigma 2. I don't know. It's all up in the air because I think these two teams have two different minds and very different ways that they like to approach this meta. And it does feel like these teams have really started to figure it out. Only one way to find out, though, what they are going to run. And that's going to be after the short break. And we'll get into map five, the final map of the series. Victory is at hand. Ashes to ashes. Die, die, die. <laughs> Let's get you back out there. I'm getting readings of cosmic disturbance in these ruins. Moira, prioritize our people, not your cosmic experiments. That's an order. Accept my gifts. And all will be yours. Your ally has descended into darkness. Our group energy is interesting. Very interesting. your popcorn ready because this is gonna be a banger the fight for top three is decided now between ssg and exo and that is a difference of mm, like three thousand dollars and 25 circuit points and that can make all the difference at the end of the road 
really can because those circuit points are going to be so valuable in order to have an extra shot at making it to the big event we have coming up at DreamHack Dallas. But Exit Bliviote, they're making one final substitution to close out this series, and that's going to be Cloud now coming in for Cookie as we head over to Shambali Monastery. So no more Sojourn play coming up from Cookie, but Cloud almost certainly coming in to play that Tracer once again. Yeah, Cookie and Sparker were so close in damage. Um, less than 600, I think, separates the separated the two on Surabasa. What I thought was interesting is actually the Tracer duel. So Shockwave actually had to change from Sojourn to Tracer, obviously with all the subs happening. But Psycho has been comfortable on this hero forever. He's the Tracer guy for his team. And you saw that in the stats. Psycho beat Shockwave by about 2,000 damage, but had Psycho only had one death versus the seven from Shockwave which I thought was very surprising considering, you know, how close that map was. That, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I like. I think it just comes down to map awareness. Like one of the reasons why a lot of tracers are considered to, to be dominant on that hero or maybe needing a little bit of work A versus B tier, right? Is how much do they understand the map to be able to get the one up on another tracer they've both been marking each other down but health pack usage is so valuable to give yourself just a little bit of extra edge heading over to shambali monastery that becomes even more important knowing that this map is a little bit skewed towards the defensive side it's just a little bit easier to be able to hold down those high grounds and just those chokes tracer is a little bit more difficult yeah, and SSG, I don't even think, have been to Shambali. Like, I'm looking through their history, and it's interesting that they've chosen this. Um, when you would think SSG's comfortability would be around dive-centric maps, but Hottie is obviously making the transition to Orisa on Orisa-based maps, and it, I'm glad to see SSG not get too stubborn around the, the Winston, because I think that's what really hurt them in the end when SSG faced off against Ents, and we pointed that out. It was the Winston-Orisa differential, and I like that SSG are, are just exploring the meta, because like even Christopher said um, in an interview that I think applies to all teams, is the patch just hit, and depending on how much time you had to really develop your mm -hmm. team in this meta, not everyone knows what the correct comp is. I think Shambali Monastery is just a, a map that teams have scrimmed on a little bit more. And when I take a look at the rest of the escort map pool for the main event, we've got Circuit Royale, which is Sigma, uh, you know, Dorado and Rialto. And I think Rialto too is a map that a lot of teams have started to avoid uh just as it, it's a little bit harder and more difficult to try to find those compositions that really work out so i think shambali monastery is a good pick here for either of these teams and as ex oblivione come out of the gates it is going to be chase on that sigma but sigma versus orissa in this matchup we usually see the orissa able to find an advantage of just being able to walk through that sigma shield it's also not lasting very long look at how quickly the were able to break that yeah, it's hard to call like a clear counter in my point of view because if you play further away as a Sigma, then the Orisa can't get to you. But if the Sigma plays too close, like you said, the Orisa can run him over. And Sigma can take long range pressure very, very well. One of the best at doing so. And that's why Chase is running it. But then you'd also need someone to contest the payload and prevent any progress where uh, Chase and Cloud have to measure that positioning very well and cycle that because they're the only two who could really do that. Um, so, EXO, we're going to get some initial progress going. Big progress there. The other upside that the Sigma does provide to this composition is Shockwave gets to play a little bit more out in the open. Because if you do play around that Sigma shield, you just have better sight lines in, onto the enemy team instead of having to strafe around a window or a wall or, or anything like that. So this payload is already going to make its way up to the final part of this point A. Uh, Space Station, though, making a swap. It's no longer going to be the Orisa. Hottie has switched back over to the Winston in order to try to get a jump on the back line. Yeah, this is a good swap to try and isolate that Sigma, place a bubble between the Sigma and the rest of the team and could really hurt them, force a teleport out of the Kiriko. So SSG had a leg up in that fight, all thanks to the Funny Astro sound barrier, but you could see that retaliation from EXO in a little bit with Crispies, but Cloud is missing, so EXO are going to take a second. 
Don't want to try to go into this one as a without that final member just because of how defensively favored this point can be. But Sigma Shield buying a little bit of time, but Hottie's so low. Oh, Gravitic Flux uh, might have just caught Hottie or at least forced Space Station to disperse. And Axo will finish the job and capture point A. Almost looked like that Suzu actually got stuck on the cart or a uh, shield or something because Hottie was low for forever and then uh, instantly got taken out there by a flank. But with Ex Oblivione taking this uh, first point, they also buy themselves some time uh, to try to get around this corner. Chase is going to go back to spawn though, so we're going to play another hero roulette in this tank role as we've seen so much coming up from Ex Oblivione. Not shy to make that switch over to the Arista to try to contest with that Winston. And this is a problem we've run into before with these two teams is how does the Winston get in on this when the Arista is so survivable? Yeah, you're so right that this is a very Arissa heavy part of the map. Because of those low ceilings, Hottie's going to have less of a fun time, especially when Chase lands random javelins into his backline. So Hottie is going to bubble off the cart and try and split up Axo's uh, resources. And Hottie is very close to Primal, so he doesn't have to jump out. But Cloud has the chase on Psycho, and a Suzu from Landon allows Psycho to get another blink. And Cloud overextended to hunt that kill and got punished. So SSG are up one in this fight. And with the Winston, with the Primal, and everything they have at their disposal, SSG are very confident in this fight. SSG are confident now, but I'd really love to hear how Ex Oblivione are going to try to contend with those alts, knowing that there's this Primal Rage and this Pulse Bomb online. How are Ex Oblivione going to set up to contest this? Let's listen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Yeah, while that fight was happening, Exibliviones said, okay, well, Space Station jumped into us. They have no mobility cooldowns. We get a chance to go figure it out, push the cart. It didn't have a whole lot of time to go. And by the time the Space Station had figured it out, they were walking into a pincer attack. You turn your back on one half of the team, you're going to get shot by the rest of it. So this cart gets to keep on trucking. 50 seconds left. Exibliviones can use this Primal Rage too if they want to initiate, but Sparker shuts it down. Potty jumps in deeper. The primal so good. And that's why Hottie is just one of the best Winstons and may just convert me into a Winston fan after all. Great follow up from the rest of SSG too. Was Hadi is one of the best primal rage users that we have seen for the Winston and I don't know what Europe kind of like feeds these guys <laughs> because they are just absolute uh, sicko mode sometimes with that. He got chatty for a reason in the is the loving nickname, but you gotta keep it up here because Exoplivioni are coming in with the primal rage of their own ways to be able to push back Ooh. this space station defense. Last push for Exo and they got the barrier. <laughs> And Sparker's under threat. He's got a primal in his face and clouds. Tracer, but Landon saves him with the Suzu and healing. As if she didn't even need the sound barrier. They've already punished Chase, who was not able to get the executes he was hoping for on the primal dive. But it's back and forth. With the longer this fight goes, the better for SSG. They have a respawn advantage, but Psycho's double kill is the end all be all to end Exo's push short of the point C cap. Point C is always so difficult to finish up, but Exoplivione bought themselves so much extra life by being able to get that second point capture. There is a noticeable win condition on the board here for Exoplivione. If they're able to just hold strong on that first point defense and whittle away at this time bank, it does limit Space Station's chances of being able to take this victory. Everything is on the line here for this final round swap. Only one can come out on top and the other is going to go home. Or stay home. And depending on where you live, it might be a good thing or a bad thing. But EXO, this is still a really good push out of them. Very, very winnable. Uh, like you said, that point C is just so difficult, especially for Winston comms. And I think it was very winnable for Axo when Chase primaled Sparker. Sparker living in that moment gave SSG a leg up. And because Axo were so tunneled on Sojourn, Psycho went into the back and killed two. So it's these little clutch moments that helped Space Station in the end. It'll be their offense up next. If they expect a Sigma out of Chase again, the Winston will be good at isolating that. So I like that Hottie is most likely going to roll out on this. Sometimes I wonder if you Primal Rage as Winston and you bop the Sojourn up a little too high if you actually give her better sight lines. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> mm. Puppies. <laughs> maybe. Maybe Shockwave gets a little lucky on that one, too, from Hottie. But it is going to be the Ramatra, and, you know, they don't want to play that. Adi is an instant go-back-to-spawn moment. Try to get this Orisa out of the gates. And, yeah, like, while you could isolate this Ramatra, if you isolate the Ramatra as you versus that is a Winston, um, I think you just get punched in the face. Yeah, I like that spot um, better, Hani. Like, he thought the Sigma was going to come out, but the Ramatra uh, is going to anchor this cart. So Hadi can javelin this Ramatra away, especially in this form. And the Moira, I mean, there's no anti heals, so there's so much resources coming out, but no Suzu's to stop, like, a Pulse Bump from Psycho or, or anything of the sort, or a Terra Surge from Hadi. So we'll see if that sacrifice of utility out of Exo, but the supplement of healing will help out in the whole oh, Psycho messed up his blink. And Exo's uh, hold on spawn continues. Cloud's May can be a huge difference maker here. Cloud played on Team Finland in the World Cup, and that May was stellar. One of the reasons why Team Finland was even able to get the third place in the World Cup and have such an astounding finish there. Uh, but with this close hold too, I mean, you shut off routes of entry here, exit, uh, entry and exit, honestly. Yeah. And uh, he sends the Space Station running all the way back to spawn again. Psycho now on the Echo to try to wrap around this May wall and at least have a little bit better of an exit route uh so they do get out of spawn here but oh once God. again what where was and crispy 
Um, Shockwave also has better sightlines than Sparker does. Sparker has to, like, go through these doorways and see what's up. He's got to do a bit of scouting. Of course, there's comms coming from his team. But Shockwave always is going to have the advantage because he's out and he's waiting for SSG to leave spawn. And Exo keeps getting first bloods in these fights. Now you get the overclock. You had the coalescence earlier. Exo have brought this time bank down in half. And this is becoming dire if you're an SSG fan. This is looking like a full hold, honestly. Like, uh, like if X Obliviona can keep this up, someone walks out. Wait, okay, there you go. That's the opening you need. You gotta capitalize on this. Oh, big old fight for SSG. Psycho has the dupe. He can preserve his life, kind of like a baby primal rage, and he doesn't even need it because he's up and above and dangling Exo. And the, the, they must have heard you call out the uh, full hold. <laughs> You've already cast the person as she got out. Yeah, see? Sometimes you just got to put that out into the universe so that the team can prove you wrong. But with that close hold, Ex Oblivione has now rewarded themselves with two temps to be able to come back in and contest this cart. So they're already coming back now. They do take some disruptor damage, but Chase is the annihilation. You can just go in and pummel everybody to death and take a look at this mm -hmm. now where the, where the cart's getting stopped. Well, let's hear on the space station comms during this big old fight. I'm going to hold first. I'm going to hold first. Okay, pocket me, pocket. I need, I need, I need, I need. Shit, I'm we have coffee, we have coffee, we have coffee. Psycho, psycho, psycho. Psycho, psycho. Left, left, left. I have Kiro, I have one. Meet, 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 meet. Yeah, only me. Main side right, main side right. They're taking someone, someone, someone. Main side right. Mail on, mail on. Taking angle, can we just go? Kiro, no shield, no shield, no shield. Yeah, yeah, ready? I kill main, kill mail, mail. Mail on, mail on, mail on. 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 Mail on, mail I'm dead. Ram one, ram one, ram one. Alright, more one, more one in. Ram one, ram one, ram one, ram one, but ram one, but ram one, but look for my now, yes, bomb soon. And the last couple of seconds go by. SSG rally together, but their forces have been cut in half, and Exo's overclock spells the end of SSG's defense. But it's an overclock push that has to take Exo, or sorry, defense, that gives Exo the win in the end and causes a huge upset in our bracket. Wow. Space Station Gaming, 72% of the chat had predicted their victory. The desk also behind them in those sales. And how could you not, right? These are names we all know and love from watching the Overwatch League. These are players that are also so lovable. But at the end of the day, not able to get the job done against the Ramatra composition. And even in those final moments of those calls, it was all about focusing on helping an individual member of the team stay alive, not necessarily on who you're going to pick. And that just speaks to how Ex Oblivione were able to lock down those defensive corners to make it more about that survival instead of the picks. And Exo gets to move on to face Twisted Minds, and this did not go well for them last time in the semifinal. Twisted Minds won against EXO 3-1, to one, but they're going to have a rematch, and that's going to be really exciting because EXO proved that they could beat Space Station. I was very impressed with their clutch factor. These, the, the whole game, the whole match was super, super close. I mean, it went to game five, so duh. But uh, very surprised that SSG, through all the versatility, were not able to counter them in time. But curious to see what the desk thinks when they had predicted SSG. So what do you think about this upset, boys? Lemon, I, Lemon, I don't know what you're talking about. I had EXO all the way. No one saw her Preds. So. Five <laughs> banger. Yeah, I, I mean, it was super you. close. You know, I, you know, I know you guys picked up SSG, but um, you know, it did it. Your, pr your prediction. It, yeah, come. okay, I picked SSG, <laughs> but I said it'd be a five map banger. It was. That was one hell of a series. An incredible upset. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, you mm -hmm. gotta be so happy for Exoblivione. These are players who've been grinding in tier two for the longest time now and taking down Space Station Gaming. Yeah. This is a huge achievement. This is a huge match for the players on that team. Yeah. It's very, massive for them. I think Shockwave, the clutch factor in map five was, was very much picks. on display there. Those picks on that, that defense from Shockwave, I mean, he really ate half the time bank almost all on his own. With that, that defensive Moira's May setup, you're pretty much stalling the car other than Sojourn, right? She's the tip of the spear and she's kind of has to do it on her own, but, but Shockwave absolutely delivered there. So huge performance from the vet.
I mean, like you guys said, it was very back and forth, but it was um, EXO taking the win. Guys, walk us through this match. So, Jake, I think you got to talk about this series. You got to talk about the tank adaptations because it came out, the Space Engine Gaming, they came out on the Mauga, which we kind of expected here on Legion Tower, Chase uh, trying to play the Orisa here. But as this series kind of progressed, we saw that Hadi, he was switching between different heroes. We saw the Mauga first, but then back to the Winston, which kind of makes sense, of course. Then over to the Orisa on push. Did, did you feel like uh, x Bravion were in control of this series? Do you feel like Space Station struggled a little bit? Because it was a series that developed kind of throughout. We saw different styles going head to head. I don't feel like we can say either team was in control, right? It was so back and forth throughout. I do think swaps wise, I did generally like what I was seeing out of Exoblivione. I think especially, um, you know, playing the Doomfist when Backbone was in. Normally you would bring out the Tracer to sort of answer the Doomfist and Echo and an uncontested Tracer could do a lot there. But with Backbone in, they're really kind of locked in on the Sim and Doom was able to run rampant. Um, we did see, I think in some of these more mirror match compositions. Space Station looked really solid, very experienced in the matchups, but Chase was just incredibly flexible throughout this series. I think that's been a huge bright spot for Exoblivione, that he is one of these new tank players who yeah. really straddles the divide between, you know, words like main tank, off tank, they just don't mean that much anymore in Overwatch. You want a tank who can do it all, that's the, sort of the modern meta. And I think Chase really shined today, able to take the Winston Mirrors, looking pretty solid, but also flexing, whether it's the Ram, whether it's the Aggressor, whether it's the Magga, it doesn't matter, right? He's got all the heroes on lock. And sometimes that balance skill is more valuable than necessarily peeking on one hero or the other. Um, I thought I saw a lot of great things out of Space Station. I mean, so for me, I can't call this like a huge disappointment for them or anything, even though it's an upset for EXO. I do feel like players like Psycho and Funny Astro um, really, they, 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 they made their presence felt on the team. They were huge. Yeah, I will say though, there were some standout moments, especially from Shockwave, who again, you know, a bit, bit of a legend of the sport here, you know, spent yeah. time on Philadelphia Fusion to kick things off. Vancouver Titans is where he's made his name in the Overwatch League. And now he's been through the grind here as well in, in European contenders and now OWCS, right? Making a name for himself, playing the Hitscan Heroes. We saw some Ash come out on the World. That was exciting. That was, that, was a, that was a great time. But also the Tracer here. You know, you gotta, you gotta give credit for Exoblivione. They were clutch mm -hmm. throughout yeah. this series. There were several 100%. clutch moments. On push especially, we yeah, saw that, that comeback push and was, push. They had no right to win it there and just perfect team play, everyone splitting. It's very hard to do, right? Those are the moments when I really am impressed by teams when, yes, a lot of teams, even at slightly less competitive levels, can, can group up as five, can brawl really well together. But when your team splits across the map and each person, you know, goes the right way, some people play their lives, others take the fight as soon as the attention comes away from them, that's the type of skill that is up to the individuals, right? That's not a collective plan. It's each person knowing what they need to do in the moment, which is something I expect from veterans, not, not something I'm expecting to see from an up and coming team who might you know, rely on each other and play more, play more stacked. So really impressive performance from EXO yeah. as they look to go, go further on in this tournament. Yeah, great stuff from EXO. We're gonna hear more from that team. We got Chase on the line for a post-match interview. Chase, big congratulations on getting the win today. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Jake, you wanna start? Yeah, so Chase, I'm just really curious your perspective coming in as like, let's say a lesser known player playing against some big names that we've seen tons and tons in the Overwatch League, uh, but, but putting up a massive series, looking incredibly good across all the heroes you play. Is there any like nerves for you or do you come in with a lot of confidence and a lot of belief in yourself um, into these big matches? I mean, of course we're nervous, right? Um, sometimes we're like mid, mid fight or like mid game, we say like, okay, pipe down, relax. And then I'm like, right in my lane again but mostly i'm like since i'm not really a veteran or experienced i'm very nervous during the matches to be fair yeah can you talk a little bit about what this means for you and your team the players who've been grinding for so long now in european contenders as well you're facing space station gaming which you know tons of overwatch league players on that team you've been professional for a while now what does this mean for you guys who you know haven't earned those salaries you know whether are you studying or you, do you have a job like what's your <laughs> current situation and what's it been like grinding here to get these wins right I mean, yeah, I'm. I don't have a job. I'm unemployed. But I think we're like really grinding a lot. This really means a lot, obviously, for our team because everyone like in power rankings, in interviews, and all of that. Like everyone says, SSG is like a tier above us, mm. and like they say, we're gonna always be tier below. Uh, I mean, we're gonna be tier below them. But I guess it just happened today. So. Oh, Not word. anymore. <laughs> you guys are you guys are the better team. You guys uh, got the win today. Uh, one final question. I mean, tomorrow is a big day. You guys are going up against another scary opponent. I feel like it's going to be Twisted Minds. Uh, do you have anything you want to say to Twisted Minds before you head into that match? Not really. I didn't expect to win, so I didn't really prepare. <laughs> <to win. laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, give me Chase, give me something. Come on, anything? Nothing? No? You're going down. You're, You're going, going down. down. There you go. Let's That's go. what I wanted. Chase, thank you so much for your amazing answers. And thank you so much for the fun interview. And good luck tomorrow, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Chase. I mean, really, I, I, I talked about it going into the main event as well. I think that Chase is a huge talent coming up here. Yeah. European Championship here. And like Jake said, like it's Overwatch 2, right? Like these young players coming in, when it comes to tank, they're going to be flexible. It's not about the standard main tank, you know, stereotype or the off tank stereotype. If you're a tank player and you want to go pro in Overwatch 2, you need to be able to play all these tanks, just like someone, for example, on Toronto yeah. Defiant, right? And we're seeing that with Chase, a young prospect here from Ukraine, doing great things in the uh, Overwatch Championship series. So here we go. How young is he? And he's, he's, what, 18, 17 or 18? 17, 17 or yeah. 18. Well, I, I should know this. I'm a professional. What, am I, what, am <laughs> what I loved about Chase's answers, though, in that interview was was the humility, you know, like being able to be honest about, yeah. like, yes, they're nervous going up against these these big name veterans. But I love that that one little nugget I got and I really focused on for me was when he said, yeah, he gets nervous. But then somebody in the team will just say, like, hey, guys, like, focus up, pipe down. And then he said he's right back in his lane again. And it's totally normal to be norm to be nervous. Like, honestly, anybody would be in this situation where you're the you're the underdog, you're the up and comer. It looks like maybe you can win. You know, of course, your heart is beating. Right. That's esports. But for me, like the fact that he can come out of that nervousness and then like refocus over and over again throughout the game. That's all you can ask for in a, in a player in that position, right, coming up. And so honestly, I think that speaks for great things to his potential that he could really be, he could turn into one of these big names, right? And I think those are the stories that I'm most excited for here in the Overwatch Championship he's, Series. He's already, he's already skilled, but like with his attitude right now, I think, I mean, like players like Chase, they're gonna definitely go far. Yeah, and, and Chase has a lot of talent, but also yeah, I gotta give credit to the, to the backline as well, the supports on that team, yeah. because we heard during the listening on Shambali Monastery, when they were preparing for a fight, the chase was like, as someone in the back line, I think it was uh, Crispy, the Lucio was like, hey, you're going to anchor with your Terra Surge and you're going to hold the fort. And then Chase is like going to the cart and then he's like, no, 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 you, you push up to the choke, you anchor the choke, right? So you could see that Chase, you know, he, he was maybe preparing his position for the fight, but then the back line instills confidence, some pre-fight planning, how we're going to position, how we're going to execute. Um, you heard it in a different setup as well. Hey, we're going to use the Kitsune Rush and the Pulse Bomb with slightly more language. In <laughs> <laughs> You can bring see that I'm bringing the carry and go in yeah. and, and have was, fun with the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The monkey's going down. But there was a lot of great pre-fight planning in that communication. So, yeah. you know, Crispy, Knell, these are not like Overwatch League players we've seen before either. So, really, it's a team effort. Credit to the whole team, an incredible upset and a huge win for an up and coming team in Europe. And as much as I love the up and comers, I do have to say though, like Shockwave, that's kind of the exact spot you want your veteran. If you're gonna have one vet on the team, having somebody who is on this like hyper carry sojourn role where you know he can just open up the fights, that's what gets you to really believe, I'll say. Like being in these matches, being in an underdog situation, yes, you can be like your team play can be good, but sometimes you need somebody to be popping off and like actually putting up numbers, cracking open the other team. Because if you're just always playing, okay, we're gonna set up and they're gonna come and we'll, we'll respond. You're never opening the fight. You're never just like getting these random kills. That's what snowballs the game and gets everybody confident, even the rookies. So, you know, really well played by Shockwave.